This video is more about networking tools than it is about Bitcoin. In this video, I will show you one method to send and receive messages using TCP IP. Then I will send a version message that I created in the previous video to an address of a random Bitcoin node. And hopefully this node will accept my message and we will be able to establish connection between my machine and this remote uh, Bitcoin node. Once this connection has been established, it can be used to transmit any type of Bitcoin message, ping, transactions, blocks, etc. The way that I will connect to this remote node requires few components, and I will use tools from the Debian Linux uh, operating system. First, we got our Python files. They will print to the terminal the hexadecimal code of our Bitcoin messages. Now, because the terminal reads this code as pure text, it needs to be converted into binary code, into zeros and one. This binary code will be sent to a remote IP address using the netcat command. But I recommend to not send this code directly uh, to netcat. Instead, I'm going to use another intermediate step in my architecture, and this would be a FIFO file which is just an easier way to feed multiple messages into Netcat. Without this FIFA file, I will be forced to manually open a new connection using Netcat whenever I want to send a new message. This way it will be easier for me to just print the result from the Python file into a FIFA file and Netcat will just read this file automatically to see if there is any new message that it needs to broadcast. So the bottom line is that I will connect to remote IP using netcat. I will make sure that netcat reads the input from a FIFO file and I will insert my Bitcoin messages in their binary forms into this FIFO file. Now all the while, I'm going to keep another process running at the background and this is TCP dump. This process will listen to any communication that passes through port 8333 and this is the default Bitcoin port and it will record all of this communication and it will save it into an interface file that I can later examine more easily. So I will start by creating the FIFO file using the command make FIFO and I'm going to also start my TCP dump process and I want to listen to any type of communication on port 8333 and I wanted to write the results into this uh, dump.pcap file. And later I will examine this file. Moving on now to netcat. First I will go to bitcoin node or bit nodes and I'll find an IP address that belongs to a stable node. Now I will use the tail command to constantly read the latest line in my FIFO file and I will pipe this line into my netcat. I'm going to use the command nc. This nv is so that it will not look for this IP address in any uh, DNS server. This is a direct IP address and the port is the default port 8333. Now this netcat process will accept the latest line for my FIFO file and it will send this line um, to this IP address. My TC dump is also ready to record this message as well as any other incoming messages and all that is left now is to run my Python code. Now if you remember from the previous video, the first step in establishing a connection to a remote node is to send it your version message. So I will begin by sending this message, this uh, Python version message. And I will pipe the result of this uh, Python version message using the command xxd. And this command will basically take the hexadecimal code that we created and it will convert it into a pure binary. And I want this binary to be saved into my FIFO file. And now the tail command will take the latest addition to my FIFO file 
and it will give it to Netcat, and Netcat will broadcast this uh, code into this remote IP. And this is how I'm going to get my Python version message into binary code, and now I'm going to send it um, using Netcat to this remote node, to this remote IP. Now I can open my dump.pickup file in programs like Wireshark, and I can see the way those messages were exchanged using uh, ports 8333. And we can see my version message as well as the version message and the acknowledgement uh, message from the remote node. And now it is up to you to play a little bit with this process. Um, I suggest that you will try to create your own version acknowledgement message so that you can complete the handshake process. And you can even send your own ping messages and see if you can get a respond from the remote node and see how you can pass this respond. And well, basically this is it. This is how the peer-to-peer -peer layer in Bitcoin operates. All of the transactions, all of the blocks, all of the information about Bitcoin travels or traverse the network using this type of messaging process. Yeah, just play with it. Hope you enjoyed, hope you find this video useful. And uh, well, that's it. Thank you for watching.